So over the break, I went ahead and revealed where the coal, the oil, and the aluminum all are in this map. And it might be a little bit premature, but the AIs are, are going through techs really fast. So uh, it'll be interesting who has these strategic resources um, within their territory. So right before we go ahead and do that, uh, let me just make sure, because I know you guys were talking about how you wanted me to uh, send in my spies in, in a few civs and try to figure out exactly what they were trying to do. I like that idea. That's a great idea. I, I, I now have two because I've discovered a few technologies. Um, and uh, and again, just to kind of, um, kind of after this after this campaign is over, I, I promise I'm going to do a video. I'm going to show you guys how to do your own AI battles. I know a lot of you guys are commenting. Uh, I, I, I promise I will. I've just been kind of busy. As soon as, this, uh, as soon as this campaign is over, I will show you guys exactly how I did it. Um, and uh, and you guys can do your own battles and stuff like that. So, really quick, um, I'm gonna go in and, and let's go ahead and send in. I we might as well send the two spies into some of the most powerful. One, we've got to send them to the Ottomans. Jesus, I mean the Ottomans are so beast right now. I, I'm so happy with the way the Ottomans are, are going. Um, it, it's so cool. That's so cool to see how powerful they are. Um, so where did I totally pass them? Didn't I? What am I? What am I smoking? The fucking O's are where are they? Uh, wait, wait, what? Maybe I maybe I didn't pass them. There they are. Oh, that's right. For some reason, they've categorized, the, categorized them under the T's instead of the O's. That doesn't make any sense. But okay, let's send it to Istanbul. Um, yes, yes, it's Istanbul. Let's, let's send it there uh, as a spy, of course. And then, you know what the other one? This is going to sound strange, but I'm telling you, baby, the, the, the Netherlands, I'm, I'm kind of rooting for these guys. I mean, it is incredible how, how strong they've been. And I just want to see what they're doing. I got to see what they're doing. This is amazing uh, what they're, what, what, what's going on in, inside this territory. I mean, they are arguably one of the strongest European nations so far. And I, I can't help but root for them. Okay, so um, in, terms of, in terms of strategic resources like we've talked about, coal, uh, oil, and aluminum, of course, in the British Isles, Seems only appropriate that Elizabeth does have... Well, actually, you know what? No, the Celts has this coal. And it's a nice big old six stack right there. Whoa, the Celts have a lot of coal. That's a lot of factories. That's a lot of ironclads. That's a lot of... Uh, well, I mean, you know what? Uh, Elizabeth has coal as well. And she has oil. Five oil resources. So the British Isles seem to be pretty stacked with strategic resources. Uh, the Celts will not have any oil. Of course, they could always trade for it. That's something to keep in mind that uh, the AI, of course, will be trading for these strategic resources as the game goes on. Um, this oil, I don't believe that she's going to be able to reach. I think that more than likely her borders are going to going to expand out towards these. Actually, she might. No, that's going to be pretty close as well. She might, though. She might end up reaching one of these oil resources, and that'll give her a lot of oils uh, of oil, so that when she eventually upgrades her ship of the line, which surprisingly enough, she does not have any ship of the lines. And that, I believe, is because she doesn't have any iron. Um, if I remember correctly, you need iron for the ship of the line. So, uh, yes, how about the Iberian Peninsula? Uh, you know, I, I want to fully warn everyone, I'm more than likely going to miss a few resources. There's just so much going on, and I'm fucking blind as a bat, so uh, I'm going to miss some uh, resources, definitely. Uh, I don't see anything in Iberia. Uh, anything, France? France is going to get a, okay, France will get some of its own oil. See, states, okay, Milan is going to have some oil, which ultimately will be given to Rome. How's Rome? How's the Italian peninsula stacked up? Yep, Rome already has some coal. I don't see too much oil on this map, though. You know what I don't see? I don't see much aluminum. Okay, so Frankfurt has its uh, control of a little bit of aluminum. Actually, no, a lot. You've got aluminum up north a little bit here, just south of Berlin. Wow, okay. How about the Scandinavian region? What's going on here? You know, I'm going to go ahead and press next turn while we kind of look around the map for this. Uh, Sweden has coal. And looks like, yep, you've got lots of coal. So it's, it's kind of, I've, I've noticed the pattern. The rich get richer. Uh, the AI, if you have coal, you have a lot of it. And if uh, you don't have coal, then you don't have a lot of the other resources either. Denmark will probably reach out and get this, this oil over here. Um, but that's about it. Uh, anything over here? Yep, of course, yeah. Wow, Sweden has a lot of coal. Just a lot of coal. Poland is very expansive. Uh, you have coal as well. Doesn't look like you might be struggling for oil. Now... You know what, now that we're kind of on the uh, topic of oil, we've got Venice with a little bit of coal, which is good. Coal is good for factories, I'm telling you. Th those factories are really crucial for production, uh, which is going to be a big difference maker. Um, Do we see that Rome is settled here? I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I talked about that before, but wow. Uh, again, the tension between Gre Rome and Greece is only going to continue to increase. There is plenty of oil in the desert, as it should be perfect. I know that Ramsey's, uh, I, I did notice over the break that Ramsey settled uh, a city right in the middle. All this salt, that's very, very good for them. I know that we're missing out on a few battles. I hope that I will not miss any sort of uh, city exchanges between the AIs. I don't think I will. I'll, I'll kind of keep my eyes up on the text up here. Usually, uh, it, it notifies me when I see a city gets taken. Oh, actually, it's going to happen right now. 
Yeah, it is. Boom. Salzburg just fell. Germany just got a whole lot powerful. A whole lot more powerful. Now he has access to five cities. That's that's big. Uh, that's huge, actually. So uh, we will have to see how that goes. You know what? And actually, what's going on here? Oh, so you're done. All you wanted was Salzburg. Seems appropriate. I mean, why would you want anything else? That would be, I would I would think, some of somewhat of a waste of time if you if you went where anywhere anything else. How about, how about this? Oh, and Spain is going to get their navy's ass kicked again. Carthage is going to whoop your ass, Spain. And that was just an unfortunate decision. Uh, Spain, I mean, I don't think that they're ever going to make any land invasion. No way. But Carthage, they have the possibility of maybe taking Barcelona. Barcelona has a lot of tiles that are adjacent, ocean tiles. Uh, which means that Carthage could get a lot of her melee boats within that area. Carthage could make a landing in Iberia. And yes, of course, Rome's territory is being used right now. I'm, I'm wondering if, if Carthage and Rome are friends. We should probably double-check the diplomacy aspect of everything like that. Uh, wow, yeah, plenty of different wars going on. This is this is getting crazy. I There's no way. Spain's navy's done. I, I don't... Well, I, I think they just sunk something. No, that was Carthage that was sinking Spain's ships. So yeah, we might. If, if, if Carthage... If, if Dido is smart here, she can probably take Barcelona. What is this research agreement? Morocco and Carthage, okay. That's good. I mean, I'm worried about I'm worried about uh, Babylon getting research agreements. But you know what? I really don't think that Babylon knows enough people in this world. Babylon's really locked off on the side of this world here. I don't think he knows anywhere close. Well, actually, he's eventually going to. He has to. I think. Yeah, obviously he does because the World Congress. Yeah, the World Congress. Okay. Uh, but that was kind of something I didn't talk about too much earlier on in this series is that Babylon probably was struggling because, you know, he didn't have access to... A lot of the other AIs, he's locked off in the corner. You know, the Ottomans have really been stopping any sort of expansion. I mean, just now he's beginning to settle just north of the Black Sea. But uh, that must have been a problem for Nebuchadnezzar in the very beginning. So I really want to see if there were a lot of oil in the uh, in the Sahara Desert as well as the Arabian Peninsula. And it looks like there is. Um, there is quite a bit of oil. Arabia is continuing to expand, of course. Good. Well, uh, there's a lot of oil in these, in these regions. So Egypt and Arabia will, more than likely, if, uh, appropriately enough, will be the main provider of oil, because I didn't see much oil at all in Europe, really. But you know what's weird, is I don't see much aluminum. That's a really strange thing. Uh, yeah, there's oil all over the Sahara Desert. Jeez. And this is going to be really interesting, because we're going to see this sort of, like, uh, European colonization of, of Africa. Just, just I'm, I'm telling you, the, the, the historical accuracies of this game is kind of scary. Um, we're, I think we're going to see, slowly, some of those AIs that don't have much, a lot of the European AIs that don't have access to any oil within mainland Europe, they're going to begin to settle in, in Africa. But this is going to totally be unlike history, because the African civs are going to kick the freaking Europeans out, which is awesome. Get them out of there. I, I get the get Morocco is going to kick ass. Uh, Carthage is going to kick ass. Egypt is going to kick ass. Uh, so I think I, I don't I, I don't think that this Portuguese city is going to stay up for much longer. I think if 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 Morocco ever gets too pissed off, he's going to be like, you know what? I'm tired of Portugal being out here, and and he's going to kick him out of Africa, which is awesome. That's great. Um, so yeah, that, that's that'll be interesting to see uh, the oil the oil rush in the Sahara Desert because there's just so much and there's just a lack of oil, a complete lack of oil within um, mainland Europe. There's a lot of coal, which is appropriate, but just not very much oil. Uh, let's see, what do we got going on here? Poland Declaration of Friendship. Before I continue on, yes, I do. Let me let me double check on this. Uh, info Addicts. So how are we doing here? I want to see Declarations of Friendship once, once again. So there's, there's, a, there's a bunch. Everyone is friends with Carthage. Uh, we don't have very... There's no one friends with the Celts, interesting enough. People, most of the Europeans are very happy with uh, the Netherlands. The Netherlands kind of forming these uh, this ally of Europeans going on. Sweden has no friends. Sp Spain has no friends. So it looks like everyone's friends with Carthage. The big one is Poland. Poland and Carthage is, is an interesting one. The Netherlands as well, I guess, is, is big. Uh, Russia has some friends. Poland looks like they're being friends with everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Poland's decided to make friends with everybody. Uh, some big ones that don't have any friends. Elizabeth, uh, Napoleon, Ramses, Arabia. Wow. Look at all these people that don't have any friends. The Ottomans are just a lone wolf. They're over there in, in Turkey, just lone wolf, ready to kick ass. Um, that is crazy. Also, how long? Well, yeah, we just sent the spies over there, so it's going to take them a while to establish, establish some surveillance. But uh, yeah, also... Uh, let me look around the map a little bit longer to see some more aluminum because I just I don't think we're going to see much more. I don't see much. Um, Russia has plenty of coal. Again, lack of oil, though. There is still a lack of oil. Of course, there are some sieves. We, we, we saw in the very beginning there were some sieves that have some oil, but uh, not that much. 
And and yeah, so I, let's talk about the implications of uh, Germany dropping and, and stealing away Salzburg from Vienna. So first of all, Austria just got a whole lot weaker. I believe though Poland and Austria are friends, which is a problem because I don't think anyone's going to be there to take out um, Maria Theresa exactly. I don't think anyone's going to be there entirely. Um, also, this is a pretty big war as well because again, like I said, if Carthage wants to, she could possibly take Barcelona if she's smart. There aren't a lot of ranged units that are protecting that area, so uh, that would be pretty interesting to see uh, what goes uh, what, what goes down there. Um, again, and I'm waiting for Rome to really play its cards. Rome is a, a huge underdog here, I think. Rome is a huge underdog. Nobody, I mean, I, I haven't really been talking about Rome that much, um, but Rome is very powerful, and it only takes... It really, I mean, the problem with Rome right now is that they're locked off in this kind of, uh, well, the AI, we all know, the AI is not very good at constructing naval naval uh, invasions. So a as soon as they end up thinking about maybe dropping Venice, maybe going through these city-states, they're going to be really, really strong. They've got a huge army, one of the biggest in the world. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they can definitely control their own destiny, but they've got to get the ball rolling. They've got to destroy Venice, and it's getting harder and harder because Venice is doing good. Well, actually, more than like, Venice has actually gotten a lot weaker because... Uh, you know, they, they just kind of threw their, their their army right in Austria, and it didn't work out so well. So yeah, Austria is very weak. I'm wondering if Poland is going to uh, maybe deny that declaration of friendship that they had before. They might end up, who knows, uh, getting rid of that declaration of friendships, and, and we might see something, something go down here. We might see something very interesting go down. Um, in terms of, of, we should probably double check on the, uh, the whole religion thing as well, because uh, that, that will be a good thing to see. Uh, let me let me check. Let me see that World Congress has been founded. Okay. Oh, I thought. Oh, oh, I thought the World Congress had already been founded. Okay. So it just had been found. I thought it was founded already. I, I don't know why. Okay. I guess that button's all automatically there. So who gets it automatically? It's Austria. Is it because you have the? Uh, did you build the Forbidden Palace? No, I don't think anyone's building the for the Forbidden Palace. Has they? Have they? I can't recall. But uh, looks like Austria was the one that founded everybody, which is interesting. I don't think that's going to last for very long. I don't think that uh, Austria is going to remain the the main host of the World Congress for much longer. I think she might get wiped out, but uh, she will get get to vote. And uh, do I get to vote? I don't think I do. Yeah, apparently I don't. Well, I guess we'll see the other person that gets to vote. I wonder who it's going to go towards, because it's not me. Austria will vote, and then we'll see who the other person is. Um, yes, again, so religion overview. What's going on? World religions. Once again, of course, Judaism is dominating Europe. Uh, Poland is, is spreading that thing all over the place. Uh, Spain is also doing a very good job as well. Babylon is keeping up. Egypt has the strongest strongest uh, religion in the game, but they just they can't they can't get it going. And also, Buddhism is very much struggling. Mecca is, is very much struggling. And I just don't think that it's a top priority of Arabia right now. I think they're really worried. Uh, Sandwich, well, actually, maybe not. I mean, they're getting up a pretty big military. They're secretly getting up a pretty large military that I don't think anyone else is really talking about. They're not really realizing. Um, and I think part of the reason is because they're, they're afraid of the Ottomans. Look at the Ottomans. Look at this army of, of fucking workers the Ottomans got building right here. I mean, they're going to kick Babylon's ass with just workers. Again, got to root, got to root for the, I don't know, well, you know, I want to kind of take that back, because I don't, I'm kind of double checking, oh, here's a, some aluminum, um, I don't know, I mean, Babylon, even though I've been kind of dissing Babylon this entire game, they are kind of becoming the underdog, as the Babylonian, I'm sorry, as the, uh, as the Ottoman Empire continues to get stronger and stronger, it's kind of hard not to root for the Babylonians, because it's like, they're really weak, I mean, they're sandwiched into a very strong, strong sieve that can destroy them at any point in this game, so, um, so that'll be really key. Oh, you know what I did want to check? What AIs have access to the strategic resources? We've got coal here. Milan has coal. But is that it? Is that the only AI that has some of these mo most more important resources? Yeah, it is. Okay, and in Kiev. So who is allied to Kiev? We have uh, Sweden. Sweden has already, I think, access to uh, some coal. Yeah, so wow. Again, again with the, the phrase, the rich get richer. Sweden doesn't need extra coal, but uh, they're going to get it more than likely if they stay friends with Ki uh, Kiev. Uh, and the other one was Milan, I believe. Yes. Rome, again, it doesn't need any coal. Rome has its own coal, yeah, here in uh, in the island of Sicily, even though it's not an island, which it, I don't know if that bothers anyone else, but it does bother me that this is not an island. I don't know why why do that. Why make this connected? Ugh, it looks terrible. I, I don't know. I mean, that's a serious problem with me. I don't know. It's just, why? What, what was the choice behind that? But whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm not going not gonna to question it. Okay, let's go to the next turn. Uh, and again, this map is getting filled out. As you can see, this map is getting completely filled out. It's 137. Um, 
And I think, if anything, I mean, again, it's it's kind of all the science victory. We're already in the Renaissance era. It's turned 137, and we're already in the Renaissance era. So um, I do kind of want to focus. There's a part of me that really, really wants to look into deeper into the Netherlands, um, as well as Elizabeth. You know, I mean, that's Elizabeth is staying. I mean, the Netherlands are on top in terms of like science and stuff like that. But you know, you know what? Who who else is on top? Um, definitely uh, England. England is kind of like. I, I, you know, I, I guess the Netherlands are a black horse, um, but but so is Elizabeth. Elizabeth's like right behind her in science output, and again, uh, that science output is the only option here. So uh, it is kind of interesting to look at both of these sieves and to see what they're both trying to do. Um, now I think that the Netherlands are pretty somewhat safe, although again we didn't even talk about this. The implications of uh, Salzburg going to Germany is big. Because now, I mean, you're, you're pretty much allowing Germany to get bigger. Uh, and and Bismarck getting bigger it can be a really, really bad thing. Is anyone going to settle this spot right here? I don't think so. This is a great spot for an AI to settle if they really wanted some maybe some coal. Um, they can't get the gems, but, you know, hey, there's a little antiquity site they could, they could go for. But, yeah, that's such a great spot. But, yeah, so this is big. Uh, first of all, you know what this also does? The dropping of, of Salzenberg... Uh, kind of kind of has a immediate border between Germany and Poland. We might see this historical battle uh, play out, but unlike in World War II, I think it might go the opposite way. Poland's very strong. I would not mess with them. Again, let's check, let's check the info addicts. Uh, who is still... I, I, I always kind of want to check this every few turns. So again, the Ottomans still at top. Arabia, yes. Uh, Poland is, is three, but not very far behind is everyone else. Portugal, Rome, Greece. Portugal, Rome, Greece. Uh, so Poland is number one. Where is Germany on this list? I assume Germany lost a lot of its troops. Yep, they did. Uh, Germany did lose a lot of its troops. How is everybody else? How are the Netherlands doing? Yeah, the Netherlands are pretty weak. Um, but, you know, fortunately enough for them, they don't border anyone else bigger. You know what? This is key here, too. Uh, look how much bigger Denmark's army is than Sweden. I mean, it's only 20,000 men, but that's significant. Uh, again, if they if they kind of get even more of an advantage there in the military department, we could see Harold try to take out Sweden. Um, that would be big. So again, with the whole science thing and science output, actually, you know what? Technologies, you can't really tell much by uh, science output in general. The Netherlands are on top, but England is right behind them. This is what I'm saying. I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I assume it's because of the size of, of these two, you know, sieves. Uh, of course, Babylon, as expected, is, is number three. They're right behind. But that's not a big surprise to anybody. Uh, the Ottomans in, in Portugal. Wow. Who's who's last? Obviously, I am last in science. But a dead... Oh. So it doesn't really matter much about their military because Denmark doesn't have a very good um, science ratio. They're two ticks behind Sweden. It's not that terrible, but uh, it still is significant. So yeah, that's key. I'd like to figure out exactly how how are the Netherlands and England dominating the science category? Because the thing about this is that there are no AIs there to stop them from winning a science victory. I guess... Um, I don't think the AI is not smart at going to war with the opposite, like with an AI that's almost about to win in a science category. I wish they would. I wish, um, you know, maybe not everyone. It would be lame if just the entire world declared war on you when, you know, you're down to your, like, second to last spaceship part. But I wish if there was another sieve that was going for that same science victory and they, and they recognized that they were behind in the space race, I wish they would just almost automatically declare war on you. I feel like that that should be it. I mean, that's that's how it should play. Oh, shit. Holy crap. Wait a second. But this was Denmark that declared war in Germany, not vice versa. So, um, holy crap. Will they make a landing, though? I don't know if Denmark has... Well, Denmark, of all the civs in this world, Denmark is the best civ at making naval invasions uh, uh, onto land. So if anyone is going to do this, if anyone is going to invade mainland Europe that it's not automatically starts off on mainland Europe, it's going to be Denmark. Because the AI is very, very good. Because they, the, they don't have the penalties. They don't have the penalties for embarking. They don't have the penalties for uh, um, the... Well, the embarking, and they don't have to spend any movement points going from uh, sea to land. So that's huge. So, I mean, that's something to take note of. And I, oh, man, in Germany, remember, they, they lost a lot of troops because, they you know, they spent a, a lot of time trying to take out Austria. And that was big. Uh, so we can't steal anything away from uh, the two spies, which is kind of normal. I don't think we're going to see anything here unless, oh, you know what? Denmark isn't even worried about... Uh, mainland Ger Germany. They're going after these these provinces in, in Russia, these colonies, I guess you could say, in Russia. Cologne, Essen, Dormud, and Stuttgart. Gart. Um, they do have their Danish berserker. Wow. 
This is going to be fun. Oh, man, I wonder how that's going to play out. But the only problem is that half of the uh, the Danish Empire is on the opposite side of Sweden. And uh, But you know what? You know what? I just realized Denmark has open borders with Sweden. For some reason, they've exchanged open borders. Do I see any Swedish troops inside of... Uh, Inside, inside of Denmark's territory. Technically, I don't, but more than likely, I bet you they probably just exchanged open borders. So I guess it doesn't really matter that their empire is kind of cut off because they can just send their military troops right through Swede the Swedish Empire. Whoa. So what do we see here? Oh, I guess we'll have to check these, these notifications here. Uh, what do we got? Um, really quick, we cannot steal technologies. I know that. So we have Amsterdam uncovered that William is secretly plotting against Harold. I don't know why, but okay. Uh, we cannot steal, obviously. So Istanbul uncovered the... Oh, so Solomon is secretly plotting against Nebuchadnezzar. Wow, that's going to be an interesting uh, story to play out. Anyways, guys, I'm going to have to stop right there. Woo, things are crazy. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.